Hello and welcome to Benz Addiction. This 2007 Mercedes Benz R350 with 197,000 kilometers at an AC compressor failure. So, as you can see, this has 196,000 kilometers and I just replaced the AC compressor on this car. So, this is the old uh, AC compressor and and you can never guess has it actually failed or not because visually it looks perfect and there's nothing wrong with it so in this video we are going to find out what are the weak points on this ac compressor denso 7seu17c which is very common from 2002 to 2020 and this is the clutchless design as you can see also you're going to tear down this air compressor and i want to show you a very important point and finally we will find out the reason behind the failure of this AC compressor. First of all, what are the weak points on this AC compressor? First of all, it's this solenoid over here that we have discussed in other videos. It can fail prematurely, causing uh, your aircon to stuck in full 100% mode or stuck in no coldness coming out of your vents at all. So your air compressor engages, works perfectly without no noise. You've got the gas inside the system, enough gas, your fan kicks in, everything works. But because this solenoid fails, it fails to push through all the gases from the inlet port through the outlet port. So, and that causes your air con not to work or function not properly. The second point of failure on these air conditioning system is the plate behind this uh, pulley over here. So it's a clutchless design, but as you can see, when I turn this pulley over here, the middle section of it stays static and doesn't turn. This compressor has internally failed, causing this small pieces that connects the internal to the pulley to cut in order to save your serpentine belt and you getting stranded in the middle of nowhere. If this was an old clutch type AC compressor, failing internally, this might cause your serpentine belt to melt down because this would stuck internally causing so much friction or causing severe failure of internal parts. Seven millimeter socket plus this special tool that you can remove this pulley with it. And it works like this. You lock the pulley in place using this tool and then you need to force this to rotate and the pulley then comes out. But before that, you need to remove this circlip from here, as you can see, and that is possible using a small screwdriver. So always make sure to wear gloves as well as eye protection. And here we go. The circlip is out by just pulling it toward yourself. Okay, here is why my air compressor doesn't work. So you see these three pieces of aluminium? It's coming off this, it's actually the weakest part of this pulley system. So here is the bearing inside, Here's, here are the rubbers. The bearing is rotating freely and the weakest point has stopped the system mechanically to uh, even cause more damage and harm to the system and serpentine belt. So in real life, this shouldn't be look like this. This should be connected to this aluminum piece uh, using these three uh, small pieces of aluminum. So I'm going to take off this snap ring from here and that will uh, happen using this snap ring remover. Just like that, watch your face and there we go. So you need one of these type of snap ring removers. After that, should be easy to pull this 
uh, pulley off using some force. As you can see, it's coming off. Just a little wiggling and you probably don't need any special tool or uh, pulley remover, but this pulley is also plastic. That's why I chipped off the top of it. Not a problem. So if your bearing is noisy, causing your compressor to make noise, you probably need to uh, replace this. And this is how to remove things. Next, we are going to remove these seven eight millimeter bolts from here to see what caused this compressor failure. Okay, very long ones. And they are full of aircon oil as well. Okay, few minutes later and I was able to pull everything apart by removing those seven aluminium bolts, the long bolts. And as you can see over here, we have seven cylinders air compressor. So the next thing we need is another snap ring uh, remover, the opposite of what we used uh, for this snap ring to remove this solenoid from here. That's the main part that can go bad and you need to remove vacuum the gases first and then uh, remove this uh, solenoid and replace it if it goes bad, which is very common on these type of compressors. And yeah, that's popped out into my safety glasses. Okay, through these channels opens the way to the gases to re recirculate through the compressor or through the inlet and outlet. So it's a very important one. So let's pull it out and have a look at it at the same time. There we go. It's filthy, but it has a very important role. So that's the main solenoid. That right off the bat, I can see that uh, moving this shaft, it's not happening effortlessly because it's got some chunk of aluminum underneath it. So it's probably something crushed underneath. Also on this side, uh, the top piece, I also can't see any issue, but there are lots of small pieces of debris and that's that's what i'm talking about lots of debris in there that shouldn't be these chunks are actually the spacers between uh the piston this piece over here so it's a friction piece in between that are coming off they shouldn't come off this easy comparing the three you'll see a lot of difference my guess is when we see these kind of chunks coming of this it's probably one of the friction pieces that is coming so due to the lack of oil and age this piece got smaller and smaller and finally because the friction plate couldn't hold it in place on top and bottom it dropped into the between the pistons and all the moving parts and shattered into the pieces causing all these debris and crap and finally seizing and causing the internal damage on the so as you can see the pistons are still okayish although due to the lots of debris they're not freely moving But it seems like uh, the damage is minimal 
due to the clutch plate getting cut from this piece as I showed you in the beginning of the video so not causing severe damage but a gradual due to the age due to 200,000 kilometers of friction and not servicing with new oil and clean oil this probably has happened to the AC compressor so there are always pros and cons comparing these new systems that are always engaged with these clutch type air compressors from old Mercedes-Benz this is the 1999 the good thing and the benefit of this system is it's only engaged when the clutch is engaged so the internal moving parts are not moving this system you can enjoy having 20% air conditioning engaged 50% 90% or 100% with the clutch type you only have it on or off and that ca can cause a disturbance to drivetrain and engine when you engage your or switch on your AAC compressor. I hope this video have added to your knowledge and uh, skills. So now you know what's happening inside your AC compressor and hopefully you provide the proper service and you know what might go wrong and you know what is the weakest point and what might fail actually when talking about these type of compressors thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video have a great day enjoy your mercedes bye let's go